I feel bad for the Jetta TDI sometimes. Here it is in a diesel-hating country, kind of barely getting traction in its diesel form. Why? Because we're kind of stupid around here. This is one of the best executed diesel cars in the world. Let's drive the 2014 Jetta Sport Wagon TDI with the sunroof, that's a model by the way, and check the tech. Now it seems to me almost everybody I run into who doesn't own a Jetta scoffs at a Jetta. They think it's kind of plain Jane, vanilla, a pitiful little suburban wagon. I love these cars. I find them to be reserved, austere, a beautiful steady hand on their design, and I love station wagons. This is a sixth generation Jetta, which means that they kind of cheaped out since the fifth generation. They took a complex rear suspension and made it a cheaper beam construction. The fancy one stays in Europe. They deleted leather interior, that's fine by me, and supposedly cheaped out the materials around the dashboard and such as well. Now inside, they may have cheapened this interior, but it still works for me. I think the materials are still quite good. The layout, like the outside of the car, is austere. It's good design. It doesn't appeal to everybody. A lot of folks look at it and say, oh, it looks plain. Others look at it and say, no, it's tasteful. It's your call. Now, an LCD head unit is standard on this car. Navigation within it is optional, and ugly is included at no extra cost. This is my least favorite head unit of any of the cars that I like out there in the world. I find it ugly. It's kind of not very intuitive as well. They've done a little bit to kind of move things around and make them a little more logical, but they don't take good advantage of the real estate. And I find that though the response is good, they've just got a lame sort of a flat looking interface. This should just be a basic head unit without LCD unless you have NAV. All the sources though are good to go from AUX, AM, FM, HD radio, satellite with a complimentary three months. Now, what's missing is USB. Instead, you have MMI, their multimedia interface, or MDI, they call it on Volkswagens. That means you can put different pigtails on here, which I think can include a USB female, but the biggest problem is this. It lives on this short, stiff cord inside this tight little binnacle, and for a modern iOS device, you gotta use an adapter, because last time I checked, they haven't done the small connector that Apple uses now, the lightning connector, for this pigtail. Which now means nothing fits in the console. Your iOS device will always have to live outside like that. Now luckily we have the main transmission, the base rig, which is a six-speed manual. Top two gears, by the way, are overdrive, part of how they get more MPG out of this guy. And with a diesel, with all that torque, that's fine. You can actually go with two overdrives and do everything else in your other taller remaining four gears. The other optional gearbox on this is very interesting. Your automatic is a direct shift gearbox, a dual clutch DSG. There is no traditional automatic in the lineup. That's kind of ambitious. Now, I love the sunroof in this car. It's a trim level on the Jetta Sport Wagon. This is Jetta Sport Wagon TDI with sunroof. This control here gives you both the glass and the screen. You rotate to preset positions here all the way open, and you get this enormous hole in the roof. It's just this incredible, dramatic opening. But I love the screen here as well because it rolls completely out of the way without a mid bar. So you get this whole open expanse. And with the top open like so, and then you close this screen up, you have this very nice kind of screened in room, if you will, that I don't think any other car I know of offers. Okay, TDI, it means several things. It's a diesel with turbocharging and direct injection. Direct injection via a common rail technology, which you can see right here. This was very revolutionary in the diesel engine world for passenger cars. What happens is it's a very precise engine as a result of all these technologies. And you get 140 horsepower, who cares? 236 foot-pounds of torque, that's the nice number. But it's been tuned relatively toward efficiency. So zero to 60 is a kind of okay 10 seconds for this 3,300 pound car. The MPG resulting from that is 30 city, 42 highway. Pretty good stuff. Unless you get the automatic. Now you drop down to 29 city, 39 highway. Still good, but not gonna blow anybody away. The problem is the automatics in this market need to blow people away. Having to commit to a manual to get full MPG out of this guy is a bit problematic. This engine, of course, is a rock star for VW. You'll find it in the Golf, you'll find it in the Beetle, you'll find it in the Audi A3, it's all over the place for them. So it's a well-proven motor. Don't have any ideas that it's somehow new age tech that might not have a future. Let's go for a ride. 
Okay, underway, the first thing I notice is the torque is really good low to mid-range, like 1,200 to 3,500 RPM is your sweet spot. Notice, you don't need to go much beyond that, and you really can't. Above 4,000, there's no point, even though turbos do spread the power around a little better. Uh, it is a definite different engine note. You will notice that, yes, it's not like a gas engine, and it doesn't reward those high RPM run-ups that a gas engine typically does. Uh, I've got this sneaking suspicion that they've tuned out some of the low-end torque in this current powertrain for economy because it doesn't quite have that giddy oomph that I'm used to in the TDI powertrains I've driven in the last couple of years. Uh, I'm not quite sure why I can't put my finger on it, but there's something going on where they've detuned some of the low-end lobe for efficiency is my hunch. That said, there's plenty to go around. Nice taut suspension, that's a VW thing. They can't help themselves there, luckily. Good visibility out the back, and you can see what I love about this roof. That's a beautiful piece of glass up there, especially in a car at a pretty modest price point. It's a luxury feel. Very nice. Overall, I don't know why I don't own one of these. I love wagons, I love diesels. I just hate to buy new cars at new car prices. Okay, let's price our little oil burning friend. 28.4 for a TDI Sport Wagon with the sunroof. Remember, that's a model, not an option. The NAV model above this is $800 more. Don't bother, that head unit's crap. The DSG automatic model is $1,100 more. Don't bother, it scrubs off MPG. That's kind of why you buy this guy. So, 28.4, here it is. Now, I really like this car, but I'm partial in some odd ways that make me kind of a commie in America. I like diesels, I like station wagons, and I also like torque over horsepower. A lot of folks share that with me. An issue to watch is what the Chevy Cruze diesel will do to this guy's market share. We reviewed that one recently, and it offers up to 7 MPG better on the highway, plus an automatic, but no wagon.